Hello, welcome to another module in this massive open online course. So, we are looking at an amplitude modulated signal and envelope detection of an amplitude modulated signal. So, let us continue our discussion on the envelope detector. the envelope detector and we have seen that the envelope detector is a very simple circuit correct to which the amplitude modulated wave is fed as input it comprises of a diode correct and a capacitor a capacitor and a load resistance in parallel. So, this is correct. This is the output, this is the input voltage and we have said the input voltage is our A m wave that is A c 1 plus k m t times cosine 2 pi f c t this is our amplitude modulated signal correct. This is our input signal which is our A m signal is fed as input to this and we said this is the envelope detector and the V out correct tracks the envelope tracks the envelope of the A m this tracks the envelope of the A m signal and we have said that if I denote this R L C correct this time constant tau equals R L C correct this is the time constant of the envelope detect correct this is the time constant for discharge correct. Once the diode of once the diode is cut off that is when the output voltage of the capacitor that is when the capacitor reaches the peak and the input voltage of the AM signal starts falling that is when the capacitor when the diode is reverse biased and the capacitor is cut off then the capacitor discharges through RL therefore, the time constant is RL times C. Okay? This is the time constant for discharge of the capacitor when V in is less than V out correct when V in will less than V out which implies the diode is cut off. Okay? Diode is reverse biased is basically your the diode is reverse biased okay? and this has to be chosen appropriately this time constant has to be chosen appropriately. Okay? appropriately. Correct? Because for instance that is it should not be too large or too small. For instance, let us let us consider if tau is too for instance, if for instance let us take a simple example, let us consider an amplitude modulated signal. Correct? let us consider an amplitude modulated signal right correct this is your am signal which is fed as input 
to the peak detector. Now, we have when it is fed as input to the envelope detector, the capacitor charges correct and it discharges. Now, if the time constant is very large, then the discharge is going to be very slow and what might happen is once it charges, the discharge is so slow that it fails to track the variation of the message. So, at what happens at this point, if you notice at this point, because the discharge is very slow, it is failing if you can see, let me just draw this again just to make it clear. So, the capacitor is charging and the discharge is very slow, correct? It charges and discharges very slowly and at this point fails to. So, if the discharge is so, this is basically showing a very slow discharge. and this implies it fails to track the envelope. Right? So, if tau is very large, if the time constant tau that is tau equals RLC is very large, the discharge is very slow. Remember tau determines the rate of discharge, time constant is the time constant is very small implies it discharges faster. If the time constant is very large, correct, the discharge is very slow. If the discharge is very slow, the envelope detector fails to track the envelope of the carrier. As you can see over here, it fails, fails to track envelope of the carrier and that you can see over here it fails. So, tau very large so tau equals R L C correct tau equals R L C very large implies fails to track the envelope correct. And in particular remember the envelope is determined by the message signal, the envelope is basically 1 plus k into m t envelope that is the rate at which the envelope is changing, the envelope the rate at which this envelope is changing is determined by the message signal. So, this is determined by your message signal, correct? This is determined. So, if the message is varying faster, the envelope is changing faster. If the message is varying slower, the envelope is changing slower. Correct. So, therefore, the capacitor, the rate of discharge, the discharge, the time constant of the capacitor should be such that it is discharge, discharging at a rate that is much faster than the rate at which the message is varying. In other words, correct, if the maximum frequency of the message signal is f m, correct, the time constant of discharge of the, capa of the capacitor should be much smaller than the time period of the maximum frequency component of the message, correct? Because the maximum frequency component of the message has frequency f m, it has a corresponding time period 1 over f m, all right, which means that is where the time period is 1 over f m, which means it is approximately changing at within the time period 1 over f m, correct? Or at the order of or time period which is of the order of 1 over f m, therefore, the time period of discharge of the capacitor of the envelope detector should be much smaller than that, all right. So, for, so for it to for the envelope detector to track the variation of the message signal. So, we have to have tau much less than 1 over f m, correct, where f m is the maximum is the maximum frequency component of the message signal. So, that means basically time period so discharge 
is faster. So, this implies discharge if time period discharge is faster than rate of discharge is faster than the rate of change of the envelope, the rate of change of because the envelope remember is proportional to the message signal which is changing all right, which is changing at the rate uh, that is the rate uh, that is basically it is changing at the maximum frequency component of the message is fm all right, the rate of change uh, is basically proportional to fm all right. So, the time period of the discharge of the capacitor must be much smaller than 1 over fm. On the other hand, now if you look at the other if you look at the other extreme, if the time constant is very large, let us consider now signal, let us again go back to our amplitude modulated signal, correct. If the time period, let us consider what happens if the time period is very small. If the time period is very small, correct, if the time period is very small, then the capacitor discharges too quickly. So, the capacitor you can see here, the capacitor discharges very rapidly, correct. If if tau or the time constant is too small, this implies capacitor discharges very capacitor discharges very rapidly this implies that it tracks the carrier you can see now see what is happening it is tracking the carrier rather than the envelope therefore output of the capacitor tracks the carrier and not not the envelope it tracks the carrier and we don't want that so what is happening the capacitor is discharging very fast all right which means it's rising with the carrier rising to the peak and it's not holding at the peak it's again discharging very rapidly with the carrier because the time constant is very small so it is tracking the carrier rather than tracking the envelope and we do not want that we want the output of the capacitor that is the output of the envelope detector to track the carrier therefore the time constant cannot be too small and when does this happen this happens if the time con constant is so small that it is smaller than the time period of the carrier free that is the time period associated with the carrier signal and then it basically rises with the carrier and again falls with the carrier. So, we have to have the time period that is the time constant of capacitor discharge must be much larger than the time period of the carrier so that it does not discharge rapidly with the carrier, it does not track the carrier signal. So, on the other hand we have to have the time period tau must be tau equals RLC must be much greater than 1 over f c so that it does not track the so that output tracks envelope rather rather than the carrier. This implies basically time time period this is time constant of discharge of capacitor 
time constant of capacitor discharge must be much greater than the time period. And therefore, now we have seen the time constant has to be chosen appropriately. If the time constant is too large, then it discharges very slowly, fails to track the message. If the time constant is too small, then it discharges very rapidly and it fails and it tracks the carrier rather than the envelope. And now combining these two conditions, we have tau must be less than less than 1 over f m and it must be greater than 1 over f c correct. So, this basically this is the gives the appropriate this basically gives the this basically gives the appropriate range for This basically gives us the appropriate range for tau, tau equals RLC, which is basically your time constant which is the time constant for capacitor discharge. And finally, also note that this is possible because note that the interesting point to note here that this is possible only because the carrier frequency F c is much greater than the maximum message frequency f m which implies 1 over f m is much greater than 1 over which implies that 1 over f m is much greater than 1 over f c and therefore, it is possible to choose a value of tau which lies in between. Therefore, Therefore, it is possible to choose a value of tau which lies in between, correct? This is only possible. We need tau which is much greater than 1 over f tau to be that is 1 over f c to be uh, we need 1 over f c that is time period to be much smaller than tau which is much smaller than 1 over f m and this is only possible because f c the carrier frequency is much larger than the message fre maximum frequency of the maximum frequency of the message signal f m which means 1 over f c is much smaller than 1 over f m. Therefore, tau has to choose to lie appropriately between these two bonds that is must be greater than 1 over f c and smaller than 1 over f m. Right? So, that basically come completes our analysis of the envelope detector that is how the working of the envelope detector, how it tracks the envelope of the incoming AM signal and produces a close approximation of the envelope of the AM signal which is basically proportional to the message MT alright. When there is no en envelope distortion, it is also important to keep in mind keep that in mind and also how to choose the time constant tau that is RLC of this envelope detector appropriately. So, that it basically on the one side it should not fail to track the message signal or the envelope and the other side it should not track the carrier rather than tracking the envelope alright. So, basically that completes our analysis and we will continue with other aspects in the subsequent modules. Thank you.